What's up, everyone? Been a while since I last streamed. I recently saw you guys' uh, episode on Horseshoe Theory with JREG and Art Chad. I was wondering if this will be similar based on the description. Well, uh, it's, uh, you can, I mean, I don't know, you can ask me anything you want, really, basically. Uh, though I do encourage you to check out the FAQ in the description because I usually get a lot of the same questions every stream, so. Uh, also, uh, I, mean, I got a cold. So, um, I might be a little bit, like, off today. I'm just trying to figure out why, uh... Yeah, so, uh, I'm just going to be, um, drawing some stuff. Well, that's why. There, should be better. I'm, uh, I'm working on, like, some new merch items. Um, as you can see in the background, I have an Umami Neon Light, which, uh, I can't really sell that, unfortunately, because um, uh, it's like an electronic thing, and um, I, I don't know. There's like liability and shit with that comes to selling like just like plugs into the wall. And I don't know if it's looking. It's it's kind of sketchy, honestly. I got it from China, so <laughs> it's very bright too. It's actually I dimmed it down all the way because uh, on a maximum setting, it's like a friggin' headlight, which is a little intense. Like it's so I might have to um, if I'm gonna do that I might try to find like a different company that makes more like a ambient LED light rather than like a friggin storefront LED light that blasts you with 7,000 lumens anyway yeah so I've been uh, working on uh, merch basically trying to get some more screen printed stuff like uh, higher quality screen printed stuff <clears throat> so uh, I'm getting these shirts made in a bulk at a company here in Montreal they're gonna screen print this design for me uh, basically it's uh, gonna be on uh, American Apparel shirts uh, it's pretty simple I'm just doing some simple stuff you know to start uh, but I want to get more into that you know having like shirts that are in my I have a merch room maybe I could like show you guys someday but uh, it's basically just a room full of merch and uh, it's all the records and stuff in there so if I could try to get more like shirts and stuff then I can ship them directly out of my uh, merch room Anyway, <laughs> safe mode part seven is like, it's like mostly animated. I just, every time I like open it up, I'm like, I get depressed for some reason. So um, I'm, I'm like working on it, but I also got a, a couple other things going on. There's a Chimney Alfonso crayon animation that's being come together. Caroline is editing that one for me. And, I also got like this crazy ass eight minute War Thunder video that should be coming out soon. It's just they never, they're taking forever um, to approve stuff. I don't still, it's been like, I, I like I finished it like 10 months ago. But I'm excited about that when that comes out. Um, uh, 
Homestead, yeah, thank you. Daniela Ramy. I uh, watched a cutting board video on Stericoma the other day. I never wanted a cutting board so bad. <laughs> uh, they're a little expensive, that brand, but uh, they last like we, they last forever, basically. So they're nice gifts, uh, too. I have an interface shirt on Oxblood, and it's my favorite. Oxblood is underrated. Andy the Fork, right on, man. Uh, is safe mode coming soon? It, it, probably in like a couple months. I, I still need to like... I'm not happy with like the episode, basically. Um, it's not substantial enough to release it after all this time, so I just want to... Uh, I like, I'd... It's not coming natural for me anymore, for some reason. I'm, I'm still working on it, but... Um, Man, I don't know, like, here's the thing. I got so much into 3D animation last year. Uh, I don't even want to open up 3D animation software anymore, even though I paid the license for it. Like, I just, I hate it. So, I got, like, really into it. I got really good at the shaders and everything. Learned, like, Autodesk Arnold and stuff, and now I can't fucking bear to, like, look at the software. I, I just hate 3D s stuff, so... Uh, Episode 7 is going to have a little bit of 3D in it, but um, I don't know what it is, guys, but, like, my passion for animation is, like, it's just completely gone out the window. Like, sorry, i got to blow my nose. I'm sorry guys I'm just saying that like I'm getting older now like I'm 34 and um, I don't want to be like spending my whole day drawing on the computer animating so I'm just getting into other stuff you know designing cool merch and stuff and I want to just like make cool clothes that are like anyone would want to wear that's not even just like it doesn't have to be necessarily like merch from my series or whatever, but just interesting looking stuff, so. It's like, here's the thing, man, like you can I can only animate for so many years, and then after a while, it just like it's too much computer, too much computer in. And uh, so you can do it when you're young, I think. And after a while, I don't know, there's like some animators that go crazy for their entire life doing this stuff, but it's, uh, it's, it's definitely, um, become more difficult in recent years. Also, I've had, like, major revelation in the past year about, like, how much time I spend doing stuff like this, and I know you guys love this stuff, and this is, you know, this is what I do, animating, but it's, it's very difficult for me to, uh, Get into that. Oh, continue it. Absurd burnout is what I would describe it as. <laughs> anyway. 
Yeah, so, uh, I'm still here, like, doing stuff. We got the... Am I gonna release the Percy Neon sign? I need that for my room. I'm gonna try to look for, like, a less bright vert, like, supplier. Like, a supplier that doesn't make them that are, like... Like, I can crank that thing up and it gets ridiculous. I don't know if you guys you can really, like, it can't really pick it up on the camera. It just gets blown out, but it's cool, man. It's fucking cool. It's also, like, bright as hell and maybe a little too, a little too bright. Also, when I plugged it in, it, like, sparked. Oh, the, the, uh, it, like, sparked on the fucking AC adapter, so I was like, ah, oh, fuck, I can't, this is, like, sketchy shit. I mean, I, it's supposed to, supposedly, it's CE compliant, you know, but, uh, I can't just, like, start selling electric stuff that's, like, uh, kind of sketch, so, um, you know, anyway. <laughs> So anyway, I'm, I'm drawing Mischief as a bird, but I, I don't want to exactly trace him. I want to kind of make like a stylized version of him. But we'll, we'll see. We'll just mess around here and see what's going on. Just going to sketch him out a bit, I guess. Maybe you just get rid of this drawing. I don't even need that shit. Let's just, let's just start from scratch. I don't know how I want to draw it. I don't know if I want to make it like sketchy like or... I might even just change what I'm drawing, so I don't know. I'm today I'm just messing around, talking to you guys. I've got nothing planned really. I'm just trying to do something while I have a cold because uh, I couldn't sleep last night. Don't want to sell cheap shit. Yeah, exactly. And like you know, that's why I'm getting into like screen printed shirts because. Direct to garment printing, which is what 99.9% .9 of YouTubers do, and what is which I sell mostly on my site too, is is mostly it's fine for like white light colored shirts, but once you start getting into like dark shirts, like black, which a lot of people like black shirts, they have to put like this white layer on first, and if they don't set it properly, it doesn't um, it and it doesn't dry properly, which sometimes happens, not all the time. Um, Basically, screen printing is the, the best quality you can get, and so I want to just have the best quality. And so, uh, that's why I've been d getting investing in more of that. So I spent two grand on uh, getting some shirts made, and I'm going to post them uh, in probably in a couple weeks. I'll just try to sell them to you guys. Also, trying to sell them for like reasonable prices, too. Um, last time I had screen printing done, they cost me like $30 a shirt. Canadian and so I had to like sell them for $40 and then plus shipping it gets really really expensive you know so these new ones I have are are uh, they cost me a, a lot less still just as good quality made in Montreal instead of Vancouver I don't know why you went to Vancouver last time and so I'll probably be able to sell them for like probably like $28 US plus shipping something like that which is a pretty good price for a nice screen printed shirt, I think. I think that's about reasonable. I mean, the, here's the thing. The prices have gone up like crazy. And um, a lot of my merch suppliers, their prices have gone up. Like getting CDs made and stuff. Are, it's just expensive now. Like $4 a CD. Are you kidding me? Like, it's, you know, it's, it's been tricky. You know, the... the coronavirus screwed up the economy and stuff and well there's other things going on in Canada but 
anyway. The profit margin is slim. I mean, I could charge more for the shirts, but I don't want to, like, fucking make it impossible for people to buy them, too, you know? You know what's really slim is the profit margin on the records. And so I made records, but, like, honestly, I, I don't know if I'm really going to do it anymore. It's just not worth it. After all the work and shit, it's, like, the margins on those are, like, 30%, actually. And then sometimes you get problems where... Where it like doesn't get delivered properly, and uh, you gotta send out a new one, and ah, uh, the 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 record, the record industry, uh, I think has gotten. Um, it it became very popular to make records in the past couple of years, and suddenly everyone wanted to make everyone wanted to make records, you know, uh, and some new record companies have popped up, uh, but it's also getting difficult to control like the quality and stuff you know and it's like there's a lot of things that go wrong with making records that can mess up the quality too and ah i'm just like i'm gonna just simplify things and make some good quality screen printed shirts you can't go wrong with that i'll ship them out myself they'll come with a little sticker or something you know it's fun and um <clears throat> and, and just spend time like designing stuff and we got this Chimney Alfonso animation coming out, so that'll be later in the year. And uh, <clears throat> there's also like a lot of other stuff I'm doing behind the scenes that I can't really talk about right now because it's po it's pointless, basically. Um, stuff that like just may not ever happen, but I have to do it for my own sake, uh, like creative-wise. It's all related to the interface and that sort of thing. How does it feel like prophesizing AI girlfriends? <laughs> well, uh, I don't know if I exactly prophesized the the girlfriend part, you know, but uh, it, it's it was obvious it was going to come eventually. Like there was video games back ten years ago that were like your AI girlfriend, like video game, you know, those like anime weird things, and um, the <clears throat> the weirdest thing for me is just. How quickly all this shit happened, you know, like when the interface was finished and then suddenly AI took off and it went from being like weird shit that you can't really generate hands properly to being like almost photorealistic videos in the uh, course of like three years. So I'm like, what's going to, what's it going to be like in 10 years? You know, it's almost going to be impossible to tell if something was generated by AI. You know, uh, sometimes I like drawing mischief kind of messed up, like out of proportion, just because that makes them look funnier sometimes. So I might do that with this drawing. Like, might have his eyes like... I don't know, we'll see. But... Hey, well, maybe I, uh, I just picked up a hoodie and Blu-ray interface. I've been lurking a while. Hey, thank you, Humanity TV. I appreciate that. Thank you. I uh, just watched a movie called Wolf House. I think you mess around with a lot. Maybe, thank you for that recommendation. I have not seen it before. Uh, I'm wondering, do you do storyboards? Um, Carlo, I, I do storyboards for uh, commission stuff. Like, uh, I got this big project coming out in a couple months. I don't know when it's coming out, but I, we did a com big storyboard for it, yeah. I can't really show you it, though, because ha the animation hasn't come out yet. Um, sorry, I'll be right back. <laughs> Oh, man. 
I hate having a cold. I took it, yeah, I took some. I took it. Uh, where does the name Hex System come from? Uh, like 12 years ago, I was looking for domain names that were like words that, um, that weren't completely gibberish, that were kind of short. And, um,. Eventually, I just kind of found the word hex system, which, um, you know, back then, like, domain names, like .com and stuff, it was hard to find stuff that wasn't just completely long. And so I just thought, hey, well, that sounds interesting. Kind of, like, inspired from, like, Boards of Canada. You know, they got, like, the Hexagon Sun stuff. and So I just bought it. Now I have hex system. <laughs> As a domain name, and then I was just like, let's make it my band name, whatever. Now, nowadays, they have all these like cool domains, like funky.xyz or or like you know, meatball. Dot biz, or not biz, but you know, like meatball. Dot like dot house, meatball house. Yeah, it's yours. I got mine right here. Have you heard of Tail Foundry? Uh, yeah, I definitely have, um, because they made a video recently about Tail uh, Interface, and uh, we did. They, they called me. We did a little video chat beforehand. They wanted to just go over like uh, they just wanted me to ask some questions, basically. I think I'm assuming you're from Tail Foundry. I got a nice bump of views because of that video. Thank you for the super chat there, P.I. <clears throat> P.I. Reminds me of time I, when I was younger, I had a job interview as a... It was for a security job. Like, I'd have to go to the parking lot of, like, Costco in the middle of the night and just sit there. <laughs> I didn't take the job. And then the guy was, like, I went to his office that was hiring me, and he's, like, uh, he's sitting in this big corner office in um, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And he's like, you ever think about being a PI? And I'm like, what do you mean, like a PI? Like a private detective? And he's like, yeah, basically, a private detective. And he's like, tell me what involves, what's involved with the job. But basically, he's like, yeah, get like a minivan, you black out the windows, and you need a video camera, and a high resolution telescope photo, ca photo camera. And you sit outside people's homes and you take photos of them. <laughs> like, 90% of the jobs were husbands trying to catch their wives cheating on someone. So you just sit there in a car being creepy as fuck, taking photos of people through your blacked out windows. And, um... And, and then he said, uh, yeah, so basically if you, like... You can't leave the car, so you have to have piss jugs with you. And he's like, recommending me these like four liter like milk drugs he's like you just pissing those things and he's like oh my guys they're all retirees they're all over the age of like 70 and they're all just sitting in there in their minivans pissing in jugs and then he's like but i need some young guys that can like you have to like chase people down he's like if they leave this is a car insurance thing right or maybe it's like a workers comp thing and you have to like catch them in the act like moving around he's like and then sometimes these people will catch on that the fact that there's PIs in their front yard, whatever, watching them. So you have to like, you have to, and they try to like drive away real quick to ch like, to um, like lose you, right? And he's like, you gotta go after them. Yet sometimes if they break the like drive through lights and stuff, I'm like, what the fuck kind of job is this? This is not illegal. I mean, this is this is illegal. I don't know what the hell. It was a weird story, man. 
But um, yeah, I didn't take that job. Because, I mean, honestly, if I was going to do that, I would take the PI job, and I would not take the security job, because the security one sounded boring. But at least the PI one sounded like uh, I would have, like, a weird story to... I don't know, it, maybe I'd do it for, like, a week, and I'd be like, this is messed up. Um, anyway, yeah, that was, um, that was back when I was looking for work in Nova Scotia, and that was the kind of work that uh, was available, and probably is... Nova Scotia doesn't have a good job market. I mean, all of Canada has a terrible job market, so... You have these kind of messed up jobs sometimes. <laughs> Damn, what's it pay for a job like that? I mean, I don't think it paid that much. I think back then it was like probably like $22 an hour, which was probably actually a lot, like 12 years ago. Yeah, I had a lot of weird jobs back in the day uh, before I became an animator. Uh, I worked as a, a lifeguard at an outdoor pool. That wasn't a weird job, it was an easy job. It was, I, basically, the thing about lifeguarding in Canada is you train for like... You do all these classes, it takes you like 10 years of classes, basically. Uh, and then once you're once you're done with that, you get the opportunity to work for minimum wage uh, as a lifeguard. So I, I don't really understand the logic behind that one. Um, but that's what it was like in Nova Scotia anyway. Uh, in Quebec, I think they had the, the wage for lifeguarding was higher. But uh, of course, I didn't live in Quebec at the time. I worked in a seafood restaurant as a busboy, and uh, that job was seafood being chucked at you from frying pans. Basically, every time the chef had to make like clam chowder, he'd have an old hot frying pan of old clam chowder, and he'd just chuck it at you. It was it was an okay job. I did that for about six months, and I was like, all right, I had enough, enough of this dishwashing. Oh, yeah. Uh, um. Quantum gut feeling. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Uh, glad you don't get paid to piss in a jar. <laughs> uh, thank you, PI. Ten years. I had to take an online course in three days outside class and I got my permit. I don't know, man. There was, in Canada, I don't know how it works, but basically there's like a system of classes. And I don't know, it probably doesn't take 10 years. It probably, um, but the way I did it, you, you had to go on these weekend classes forever, basically. Um, and it was like, probably not 10 years worth of classes, but you probably don't have to take 10 years worth of classes. But I, I remember going for like 10 years. Maybe it was less than that. Maybe it was like seven years or something like that. I don't know. Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, how aggressive are Quebecois at people who don't speak French? Um, it, you know what? You don't have to speak French at all, basically. Um, it's, most people are bilingual here, um, and most people don't care if you speak English. Um, Maybe the older people do a little bit, but you don't. That's mostly just because they don't speak English, or, or you know, they. Honestly, I never had anyone get mad at me that I was speaking English. Um, but at the same time, I don't really speak English in public, so uh, that's like when I go to a restaurant, I usually order my food in French. It's not very hard after you do it a while and. Uh, no, I, can, I can speak French, sort of. But... Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the, Montreal gets a lot of tourists. 
and so they don't like no one gets mad really. They if you if you were to live here, if you were to move to Quebec, Quebec Montreal, and try to like go to the DMV and uh, or go to the try to get your health card renewed and only speak English, you might encounter some crusty old French people that. Are, you know, if you try to go to the hospital, if you break your leg or something, like, people mostly speak French. Like, nurses and stuff, they don't, they speak French, depending on where you go, so. It'd just be difficult for you, you know? And the good thing is, uh, they have classes here that are, like, super cheap. And, uh, if you wanted to learn French, you can, uh, well, you could probably do it in about six months of full-time classes. Get to a, like a, like a passable level of speaking. Uh, jock lamps. I did construction and manufacturing before I became an animator. Both sucked. Yeah. Yeah. It it makes it, it really puts it in perspective how lucky I am to not have to do that kind of stuff anymore. Uh, I can just draw shit, make fun animations or music, and. Uh, but it was. It was. Uh, yeah, those kind of jobs are tough, man. Uh, speaking of, I'm visiting Montreal this summer with my aunt. What are things you recommend visiting and doing? Also, love your stuff. Um, well, it depends um, what kind of uh, stuff you like to do, because we got a lot of stuff here in Montreal. Like if you if you like music, there's like concerts like every week, constantly. Like uh, I'm going to a, a, a what's, how do you pronounce the guy's name? Wynex. Woonix, point never. Woonix, point never. In a couple weeks, he's coming to Montreal. Uh, so we're going to that with Carolina. We got the. We have a uh, symphony orchestra, which I like to go to sometimes. And uh, you can listen to some nice orchestral music. And it's not very expensive. I mean, it is, but not. I mean, it's like. Usually like fifty dollars a ticket or something like that, um, but it's like a really nice theater, uh, nice uh, or or orchestra house. Um, the thing that most tourists do is they they walk from Peel Street. You can go all the way up to the top of the, like this big hill. Which we call it the mountain, Mont Royal. And there's like a a, a look off point. And you can see the entire city, so you might want to do that. It's fun. You can get a coffee up there. Coffee and carrot cake. They got carrot cake up there. It's really delicious every time. Uh, you can go down to uh, St. Laurent Street. And uh, you can get some poutine there probably. Or uh, you can go to Schwartz. I mean, it's like a tourist trap basically. It's like the, the thing where everyone goes. You don't have to go to Schwartz. But I actually, I like it. I mean, I've gone a couple times. I went like twice in my life. Right, because, but it's like this, it's like this, um, it's like a deli restaurant. Basically, you just order a smoked meat sandwich. That's all it is. It's nothing fancy. It's just a piece of bread with mustard and smoked meat, but a uh, pretty good tasting. Um, what else could you do? There's a lot of things. You go walk around the old port. The old port's like got like this old style architecture and stuff, but. It's a really touristy area, especially in the summer. But you might still want to see it just for photos and stuff, just to enjoy it. Uh, I would, what I would recommend is go down to Vasco. Vasco is a cigar shop on uh, St. Catherine Street. Get a get yourself a cigar for like twenty bucks, and then you can go walk down uh, St. Uh, then you walk down um, Atwater Street. And you go to the farmer's market there, you grab yourself a pizza, and then you go smoke your cigar and you walk down the canal. 
and in the middle of summer, like on a weekend, there's tons of people out. It'd be very nice and warm. You can rent a bike if you want. You can rent a, a kayak. You can go uh, bike down the ca the canals. Beautiful. That's what I would recommend doing. You know, or get a joint or something like that. <laughs> that that make for a nice weekend, man. I do that shit all the time. Uh, not all the time, but I do it at least a couple times a summer. P.I. Watch interface while on deployment. God was a bitch to figure out what was going on when the aircraft was flying off. The <laughs> shit was in the van. <laughs> oh man, that's crazy, dude. Where did you get deployed to? I, I maybe, maybe you can't say, eh? I have a friend who's in the Air Force. He's like, I can't tell you what's going on. It's top secret. He's doing some crazy shit in like fucking the Black Sea or something like that. With Canada's like rusted air airplanes. Uh, Moo Muicide, uh, if you're reading this, huge fan of your work. Hey, I appreciate the comment. Thank you, Muicide. What are your thoughts on the singularity? Um, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, you know, apparently OpenAI is making the singularity. Like, they're making this crazy data center with Microsoft. And they're just like... They're just gonna spend as much money as possible making the most crazy... So, I don't know what's gonna come from that. Is it just gonna be like a, a really smart chatbot? Or is it actually gonna become conscious? I don't know, you know? Is there something to life that, that requires consciousness that a machine can't replicate? That's the real question that everyone's been asking. It's like you can train a chatbot and make it smarter and smarter, but at a certain is it, is it conscious though? Not really, is unless you give it some sort of way to be conscious. If you give it autonomy, if you give it a memory, if you maybe it can become a very good simulation of consciousness. But is it actually conscious? I was actually interested in visiting Leonard Cohen's grave on the mountain. Uh, yeah, I think you could probably do that. There's a huge uh, cemetery on the... Like, if you walk up the mountain, you go down the park, there's a big cemetery over there. I think you'll probably be able to find it in there. Hey, uh, Mammy, first time joining. I need uh, advice uh, for something to make... Um How to become an artist, gamer, or YouTuber? I have been nobody my whole life, and I had hard working job experience. How? I mean, I can't answer that, man. Here's the thing: you're gonna find a million videos on YouTube. How to become a YouTuber? How to become, you know, how to grow your channel and all this shit. It's all bullshit, basically. Um, the way I became popular on YouTube was making satirical animations about McDonald's. Or, uh, Interface wasn't the thing that made me popular initially, you know? It was all those weird videos like Thomas the Thumernicular Bomb. And eventually I grew out of doing that kind of stuff. Sometimes I still do it here and there, but, um... You know, there's no real answer for, for that. And, um... You have to get good at a certain skill, whatever it is. If you're good enough at that skill, people will probably be interested in seeing more of whatever it is you're good at so if you want to become an art artist gamer or youtuber you have to just start doing it maybe uh, if you want to become a game like a, a video game developer or whatever you can start your process on learning how to do that and you can document your your process on YouTube. I remember there's a couple YouTubers that did that. They didn't know anything about programming. They got into making uh, programming, but they, they made YouTube videos about it too. I'm going to be quite honest with you. YouTube has become extremely saturated and it's a lot more difficult now than it used to be. Um, there's a lot of competition. So you really have to stand out in some way. And uh, But I do think that if you are going to stand out, the best thing you can do is be as authentic as you can. Um, I think people are getting tired of um, overproduced videos and 
and everything being super clean and tight and I don't know me personally I, I, I connect more with youtubers that are just they have more of a rougher kind of way of making things or explaining things Uh, Bopper, I think I have that one, that question answer, uh, it's in the, in the description if you just scroll down. I think we, uh, Breban, I think we know so little about consciousness that guess what would happen is pretty much a coin flip. You know, if you break it down, it's, yeah, you're right, it's, um, Electricity running through a brain, essentially, through the neurons. And if we could make something very similar to that using silicon chips. How do we know if it's something that's conscious or not, you know? What is... How is life created, you know? I, these are things I, I, I ask myself a lot. And uh, I, I can't really answer these questions. When that mo missile hit Poland, our ship confirmed that it was Ukraine instead of Russia. Fucking told us we stopped World War Three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the news keeps on, like, pushing this narrative that Russia's gonna push into, like, the EU. Like, NATO countries. And, um, I just don't believe that at all. Like, it's just warmongering, basically. Uh, I don't feel like Russia would do something like that. I mean, I could be wrong, but it just like seems so stupid. I think they just want Ukraine. <clears throat> and if they were to push into the NATO, it would be like World War Three. It'd be like, I don't know. It was just, it's just, it's not gonna happen. I don't know what the hell's going on in the world these days. So I mean, what's going on with fucking Iran? You know, sh shooting missiles and. It's like we almost had World War III like four different times in the past few, couple years. Like there was like moments where it could have happened. But I think a lot of it is overblown. T-A-O-W. Uh, love your art. Got a bunch of your posters up on my wall. YouTube is very saturated now. I agree it's difficult. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. YouTube is, uh, it is saturated, but I know that they're pushing new channels these days more than they used to, so, um... Because I see a lot of, on the homepage, there's a lot of channels that are just, like, 300 views, and, uh, they're, they're trying to get new, new talent out there, I think, you know? Personally, I think they're going about it the wrong way. I think they're trying to do this and pushing new channels using an old algorithm. And I think the algorithm's still fucked. Like, honestly, um, I think the way the algorithm works right now is still like, you have to make the same thing over and over again, or your audience has to be 100% engaged with everything you make, otherwise it won't show it to anybody. Uh, or this hyper focus on audience retention, like, um, so all of these videos that do really well are like Mr. Beast style, where you just feel like uh, you're having psychosis while you're watching it. I don't think that's a good way to produce videos. Like, I don't think, just because the algorithm says that's the best, uh, doesn't mean it's, it is the best. Uh, but anyway, I'm not, until they change stuff like that, I think we're just going to see more of the same, you know. Uh, and And honestly, there's... A, a problem now where on YouTube it's easier to just talk about shit rather than make shit, you know? And so you see all these like artists, illustrators, musicians, and you don't see any of their music or art. All you see is tutorials and, uh, you know, oh, Spotify did this. Here's the top 10 things about Spotify or here's the top 10 things about Etsy, you know, and how to grow your store on Etsy or or, uh, but where the fuck is the artwork? I mean, can't YouTube be a primary source for seeing original things, you know? And I guess it does, in some way, promote original stuff. But it seems to be very, uh, 
selective about how it goes about doing that. It's I don't know how. I uh, to this day I still don't fucking know how the algorithm works. Like I just don't know. Anyway, enough about that. So I, when people ask me for advice on how to, you know, promote a YouTube channel and stuff, I really, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know if, I don't like this version of Mischief. I don't like how his eyes are so large. I don't like his haircut. So much better. What are your thoughts on YouTube Shorts? I I've been pretty much against them since the beginning. I just think it's uh. They're just chasing TikTok trends, and uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't try to think about it too much. I don't know. Shorts feeds promotes a lot of new animators. It's true that shorts do promote animation, man, animators. Um, uh, but I find that the subscriptions that you gain from shorts are not the same quality of subscriptions that you get from regular videos. So I see a lot of people try to push their regular videos after they blow up on shorts and it gets like nothing. Unless they're changed that. You know, I don't know. All this music is my own. Uh, Hector? And you can see the title there on the, the right side. It's uh, Hex System is my uh, music handle. You can find it all on Spotify. I'm not doing so well with this drawing today, but I don't think it really matters. It's having a cold. It's like affecting my brain. What motivated you to keep creating art and avoid artist block? Uh, well, I, I don't really get... See, here's the thing with artist block. I feel like if you overthink things, you're bound to get artist block. And when I was making interface and other animations earlier in the day, uh, I, I didn't think too much about what I was doing. And I liked making music, right? So I would make music and I would just kind of draw whatever came to my head while I was listening to the music. And uh, that, that was my way of overcoming writer's block because if I stare at a screen and try to type something out, I find it very difficult to write a story. But if I make music and I listen to the music, somehow there's like images in my head and I can figure out a story from that. So if you can figure out some sort of method that works for you, that that will be how you overcome writer's block, I guess. Uh, it's probably different for everybody. Uh, Ryan Warrenick, how did you come up with the idea for Mischief? I don't know, man. Uh, I drew a comic back in 2009, and uh, I think I've shown it to a lot of people already. Um, I'll show you again. But basically, it's, uh, I drew this, and I even had a title page called Interface which I don't know where it is, but uh, that's where that's where Interface started. Like I just, I, I thought that I was gonna make a comic book, but then I got lazy. I used to work in a parking booth too, 
So I think I actually drew this like at my job once in a parking booth. I forget exactly what, when I drew it, but I was like, let's just make this as an animation. I was like, oh, let's let's do like I was too lazy to draw a comic book, but then I was not lazy enough to freaking animate a two-hour animated film. So I don't, I can't really explain that one. Um, But I think what happens is if you break it down into like little chunks, it makes things easier, you know? So I was like, when I started, I was like, okay, one minute animation is not really that difficult, you know? Two minutes, I can just drag out the shot by having him stare into the camera or something, you know? And uh, to my, and it kind of worked to my advantage because it kind of built the mood. And also, I, I liked animation, I like animation, but I feel like a lot of animation was too fast-paced for me, so I kind of wanted to slow it down. P.I. Uh, can you get hired for an audiobook? <laughs> well, my voice right now is kind of fucked up because I have a uh, cold, so I've got cold voice right now. Have you listened to Everywhere at the End of Time? No, I haven't. Hey, I appreciate all these comments for you guys. I love you guys too. Okay, let's see here. What's going on with this mischief? I don't know if it's, I don't really like this mischief drawing I'm doing here. Don't like it. Mischief is it's very cursed, these circle eyes. Animation is all about being lazy and cutting corners. Changed my mind. <laughs> yeah, man. I actually think a lot of animators um, tend to confuse, like, like it's possible to over animate stuff. Sometimes I watch animations that are on YouTube, whatever, and they're objectively like good animation, you know. But my eyes kind of glaze over when there's so much movement. And I don't really get much out of it. And I almost appreciate animation that's a little bit more static m more often, like uh, like the Big Les show or something. I don't know why it is. It just uh, it just it like the the it's like more iconic looking. Like the images kind of sit in your head longer or something. I don't know what it is, but sometimes I see animation where it's like ah, this movement, this guy getting punched, and they go flying this way and that way, and <laughs> and it, it's cool for a little bit, but it definitely like there's like a threshold where the amount of frames you you make doesn't necessarily make for a more memorable animation. I am self-taught, yeah, pretty much. All right, I gotta blow my nose again. Sorry.
Uh, are you inspired by Junji Ito? Uh, no, I wasn't really aware of him before I started animating, so I can't really say I was inspired, but um, I do like his animation. The thing he's making with Adult Swim looks really cool. I just like drawing mischief and yeah. Let's just let's just draw him off character today. Maybe I should change my brush. I don't like this brush. Let's try something else. Kyle's paint box. What the hell? Oh, Jesus. What the hell is that? Kyle's paint boxes. Making my computer melt down. Uh, Breed Band, I think uh, I answered that in the FAQ as well. Musical Inspirations. I'm thinking of starting an animation channel. Would you say it's worth it? You have to pretty much love animation if, if, if I think it's worth it, you know. YouTube is... doesn't seem like they're going in the direction of making it easy for original content to thrive still to this day, even after all this time. So I can't, like, recommend you do this. It's not that easy to get established, quite, quite frank. Um... It's it's tough, man. I don't know what to say. Like even even today, like uh, I'm like somewhat established, I guess, on YouTube as an animator, but not really. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, it's I gotta work on it every day, and uh, it becomes this all-consuming sort of thing in your life. You know? I don't. If you're an artist, you have this creative thing this desire that you have to just keep making stuff so it's almost like it's not like do i want to become an animator on youtube it's are you already creating stuff and are you already like have this artistic desire to create stuff because if because then it's simple you just make it a youtube video like are you just documenting your process or something you know but thinking it from the perspective of someone who doesn't do creative stuff at all and saying I want to start a YouTube channel and be an animator is I don't think it's going to work because you have to you have to have to have the desire to create stuff to you know in the first place right like um like I made music since 2009 and I've been making albums and EPs and stuff since then but no one listened to it you know and uh, but it didn't matter I was still going to make the music anyway um, the the animations and stuff made people listen to my music. Um, but, like, it's, it's kind of like, you're asking me, should I become a YouTube animator? And the thing is, is like, you shouldn't be asking me that. You should be asking yourself, you know? And, um, the, the answer is obvious if you're already, like, creating stuff and you have a desire to create stuff, you know? That's, that's my opinion. Um, if you want to become a YouTube animator that's like you, you have a full time job doing it and stuff you have to be it's a lot of it is um, not just drawing and art you know there's a lot of uh, 
you know, I, I have to make mer you make merchandise and stuff if you want to actually sell stuff and make money, and um, it's a lot of design and business stuff too. You know, it's, uh, taxes and suppliers and fulfillment and programming, web design and all this sort of thing. It's not. Um, it's. I mean, you can outsource that and just use Teespring and stuff, but like it's uh, or whatever. But anyway. If, if you're an artist, then the answer is basically um, yes, because you're going to have to create stuff anyway. So. I'm just like drawing scribbles right now. I don't, I'm not even drawing anything good. But uh, maybe I'll just try tracing again. Do you watch Daria Cohen's or Worthy Kids animations? Um, I don't really watch either of those channels, but um, I like Hannah Daigle's animations. <clears throat> and I like uh, Pilot Red Sun. And um, Hannah Daigle, she makes this uh, series called uh, Satina. I think she works with like a bunch of other people too. Uh, this YouTuber. I like her stuff. It's very, very funny. <clears throat> oh, uh, I do like Joe Kappa, too. Yeah, I met Joe Kappa uh, last uh, at the Ottawa Film Festival last year. Felix Colgrave, I like. I, he's definitely a talented animator. I don't know what it is. I, I do like Double King. You know, I just. I'm not so much into his work that much, I guess. I don't know why. Were you thinking about smear frames? <clears throat> when you were named smear. Yes, I was actually, yeah. Uh, Zing Tegger. Hello from the lunar side. I show your videos to dates as a barometer. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a pretty good barometer. Just holding up the, uh, just holding up the video of, of um, Neil Grass Tyson eating a sandwich. Just like, just studying them for their reaction. That's pretty funny, man. Did you see there's new Big Les? Yeah, I've, I've been watching a couple of them. I haven't seen them all yet. I, the new Clarence videos are pretty pretty funny, man. Hey, Donnie. Little Donnie, I stole your water bottle. It's pretty funny. I'll go hide with the water bottle. Whoa, we're going to oh, we'll see how Donnie reacts. <laughs> I can't do his voice that well, man. It's just so funny, that character. Clarence. Donnie, I just like hanging out with you guys, you know? You're so cool. <laughs> man. Uh... 
<clears throat> what do you do in your spare time? Um, I used to play a lot of like, video games, like a lot, but I stopped. Now I now I don't play them that much. Um, I play them maybe like an hour every week. Cause uh, I was I don't know it's just too much screen time you know, so I'm trying to get back into painting, but that also is more artistic stuff and like there's only so much artistic stuff you can do in a week before you start like getting drained you know. So um, I've been going to the gym more often, like uh, I've been going twice a week since the beginning of the year. Except for this week, probably, because I'm sick. Um, but, yeah, I've been uh, trying to exercise and just get out more, do things in the city, you know? I live in Montreal. I live in, like, one of the coolest cities, and I don't... And I haven't really been enjoying it, you know? <laughs> Did you ever watch any Grickle? Graham Annabelle. That doesn't. I had never heard of that. No, sorry, man. I think everyone stopped playing video because games suck now. Um, I think. You know, here's the thing. I video games started getting like too complicated for me, and I don't know if that's like a boomer opinion, but like. As soon as I have to, like, craft things with, like, eight different parts that I have to scourge across, like, a, a map or whatever, I just... I don't... It's, I don't really like doing that, you know? Or, um... I don't like crafting things in games. I remember one time I tried playing, uh, Fallout, and there were, I had to, like, look at the Pip-Boy thing, and I was, like, menu diving for, like, an hour, and I was like, why the fuck am I doing this? And I just, like, uninstalled it. <laughs> and then, uh... I don't know. I, I have been playing uh, Half-Life Alex. Carolina bought one of those uh, Quest 2s. It's a, they're on sale now, like really cheap. And um, she wanted to play Beat Saber because her friend plays Beat Saber. And uh, so she bought that and then she's like, well, we can hook it up to the computer and we can play we can play Half-Life Alex. I love Half-Life games. So I was like, yes, that's like, the th I wanted to do that since it came out, but I never had a VR set, right? <clears throat> And uh, the Half-Life Alex game is fucking awesome. I gotta say, it's so much fun. It's, uh, like, you have to, like, you have to, like, load the gun yourself. And um, it's cool. Like, you can, you can, like, cock the gun and stuff. You can, you can manipulate it just like a real one. You can eject bullets if you waste them. And there's like a shotgun you can get to like cock it and everything. It's just it makes everything like way more interactive and and fun and like so it, like you're trying to do this stuff and there's like z zombies whatever coming after you, and you you're like kind of freaking out because you have to like load things properly. It just makes everything more uh, intense, um, rather than just like pressing R on the keyboard, you know. So uh, I think VR, if they can like make it like lighter and not hurt so much your eyes and stuff and a little bit less clunky it's it will probably take over the whole keyboard mouse kind of gaming setup that most people have these days I think it's probably gonna take about 10 years for it to become more mainstream though in my opinion but it's it's getting there do you watch the minute hour oh yes man I do well. I don't. I don't like. I know about him, and uh, I've we've collaborated before, and I even met him before at the Ottawa Film Festival. He's a, one of my friends now. So, <clears throat> what part did you enjoy the most in making Interface? Uh, probably the music. The animation part I did enjoy, for the most part, but. It be it got tedious towards the end. Uh, damn, this guy's gonna hate Morrowind. Yeah. So after I play Half-Life Alex, I might get that um, 
medieval one. You know, the one with a sword and you can like fucking stab people and shit. And like, it looks cool. Uh, but I'm gonna just take my time and I'm only doing like Half Life Alex like 40 minutes at a time because it, it starts to hurt my head, and, like my eyes. Yeah. Might like bone works. Okay, I'll, I'll check that out. Have you seen F Lives animations on YouTube? Uh, I don't know. I don't know who that is either. No, I have not seen these. There's a lot of... It looks cool, though. There's a lot of YouTube channels out there now. It's hard to be aware of them all. If you have a quest, you need to get a replacement head strap for it to be anywhere near comfortable, by the way. Really? Like, uh... I find it... It's it's not the strap that bothers me, though. It's the, um... It's just the, the screen blasting into my eyes. I mean, that's probably... And the fact that I have to put glasses... I have a different pair of glasses that are a little bit smaller than these. And I put them in there. And they, like, squeeze up against my face and stuff. It'd be nice if I could, like... If they had, like, a diopter or something. Or something like you could focus without having to wear glasses in there. That would be cool. But uh, I understand that introduces another layer of complexity. Shallow, I just watched Interface, found you this week. Cannot wait for safe mode to come out. Well, I appreciate that, thank you. Safe mode's a bit different, like, you know, it's. I don't know how long it's gonna take me to finish it. It might take me forever. Um, Interface was sort of the thing I wanted to finish and be a complete project, and uh, I'm not so sure what's going on with safe mode. It's just something I'm working on here and there, you know. Uh, I don't have, like, this... I don't know what it was with Interface. Interface was like this like kind of thesis that I needed to like get out of my body or like get out of my system somehow. Safe mode is just more like a weird shit that I'm just kind of messing around with on the side. It's not really... I'm not too thinking about it too hard, you know? The, right, the main reason why I was thinking about being a YouTube animator, by the way, is because I'm slowly making a game and I need some kind of regular output instead of banking all my odds on one release a year. Well, if you make a good game, you can probably make a lot more money releasing the game on Steam than you can on YouTube, or like just making YouTube animations. That's that's what I think, but uh, of course I don't have any experience releasing games. But I think like you could probably build up a following of people watching you work on development. The same way that the guy that made uh, Juice Galaxy kind of like documents his things it gets people interested in it. have you experimented with touch designer I heard about touch designer and I've never tried it no I haven't I don't know it looks cool though Anna a uh, big fan of yours wanted to buy some LPs but shipping to the Netherlands is expensive as hell do you feel like your music would be well liked in the <sighs> egg um, yeah, by the way, I, I need to change the shipping rates for U the European orders, because right now it's set to like $40 or something crazy high, um, but we, uh, our shipping company, uh, Canada Post, they, they might put us on a tier that allows us to ship it for like $25. So. Yeah, here's the problem with, with my shipping is, um, shipping with tracking is like $25 to $30 or something like that. And unfortunately, people in the EU also have to pay VAT tax. I think. I think that's how it works. Supposedly, Bandcamp says they collect it or something, but I don't know how that works. Uh, I feel like my music would probably be well received in The Hague. I'm trying to, uh, 
you know, the thing is with the LEPs, like the vinyls, they're not very... I don't make, like, that much money. I basically break even. If anything, my margins are like 20%, so 20-30% probably. Thank God for streaming. So, but, uh... I don't know. I don't know. I've never been to uh, the Netherlands. Wait, that's not true. Uh, I was in Copenhagen. Wait, is that is that Netherlands? I don't know. I wasn't really there though. I was in the airport. That's in Denmark. Denmark's capital. Sorry, I don't know Europe that well. <laughs> Netherlands. Let's see here. The Hague, Amsterdam. Oh, I had a interface screen in Amsterdam like last year. I almost went, but uh, I was I was traveling a lot last year, so I couldn't go. It was just expensive. Copenhagen is Denmark. Yeah, it's our neighbor. <laughs> Sorry. I was in the Copenhagen airport. They had like graffiti on the walls. I was like, uh, I had like a layover for like eight hours, starting at like midnight, and so everything was closed, and uh, I, I needed to sleep. So I was looking for like a like a place to sleep, and there was nothing. Um, but I found this like weird hallway, and. Uh, it was like, there was like graffiti on the wall. So I was like, the fuck? What, what's going on with this airport, right? It was strange. And then um, I had to go catch my flight later and I went to a different wing of the airport. It was like brand new. Everything was like glass, super fancy. I was like, I was like sleeping in the ghetto section of the Copenhagen airport. It is expensive, but worth it. Yeah, I'd say, uh, well, if you're talking about vinyls, I can't remember. But uh, it is worth it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you think Sisyphus is happy? You mean the guy that pushing up that rock for infinity? Yeah, uh, definitely not happy. He's probably like having a psychotic breakdown. Oh, my drawing's going very well today. I think I'm going to have a cold, like, my my brain, like, stops working. My creative brain stops working. I, like, I try to do creative stuff every day, but it doesn't work. What's your favorite way to eat potatoes? Uh, baked with sour cream and green onions or in a pierogi with bacon and cheese. Bean pole is... I've made some... Um, 
animations for Adult Swim Smalls like five years ago. And uh, I would still do, I could still make more if I wanted to. I just got to email them, but um, I think they just, I don't, I don't know. I just, the, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I, I don't want to have like a, like a, like a, like a, like a commission. I don't like doing commissions, basically. I, I don't like thinking I don't you have to like plan things out. You have to like think about the whole episode. You have to like plan it out and tell them what it is and where the joke is and that. And I don't work that way usually. I just make shit randomly and I piece it together. It's not a very efficient way of working, I tell you that. Uh don't you think you're kind of a Sisyphus yourself? I mean, yeah, basically if you're trying to make YouTube videos, everyone's on YouTube is like a Sisyphus in some sort of way. Trying to push this stupid fucking algorithm up a mountain or something. So I just said screw it. And uh, I don't really think about too much the algorithm anymore. You know. I'll just eat my sandwich at the bottom of the mountain. I created a scene from Interface with Chef and his visions in Roller Coaster Tycoon for a contest. That sounds interesting, man. Hey, appreciate the super chat. Thank you. What musicians do you listen to to get inspired to make something? Um, I got a, a playlist called uh, Enjoyable Sounds on Spotify. And uh, I'll just copy and paste the link. I like listen to a lot of different stuff. But um, usually if I'm trying to work out or whatever, uh, or if I'm trying to draw stuff, I'll put on that playlist. Hey, can you check out one artist? She's painting mostly her manga, and she's a singer named Russo. Okay, I'll check her out. Alright. Do you stream regularly? Uh, I don't. I stream sporadically, and maybe once a month. Because it, it's, I'm not, uh, I don't really have much to say, really. Where, where do I go to find this artist? Instagram? Is this the artist you're talking about? Ooh. Figure drawing. I like it. Yeah, I like the stuff. It's cool. It looks really nice. Why did you mention this artist in particular? I once dove into a mammy rabbit hole and found a website. There was more to the universe behind a mammy. You can't send a website anymore. You know what I'm talking about? I have no idea, man. I have no idea. Do you think Adult Swim is worth dealing with these days? <laughs> I mean, it, it, of course it is. They got money and stuff. It's, it's essentially Turner Broadcasting or Warner Brothers or whatever. I don't know. <clears throat> they're making I mean honestly they're, they're making uh, Smiling Friends which is a hilarious show you know it's just it's not like it's not like it was like 15 years ago you know what I mean like everything they're competing with YouTube now it's hard for them to keep their footing as like you know the place where stuff is they're doing an amazing job though they're hiring all these animators and making crazy stuff uh adult swim smalls and that sort of thing and a lot of this stuff wouldn't really get seen elsewhere like I, I discovered a lot of cool animators just from watching adult swim smalls
Uh, would you like to see the recreation of the scene I mentioned? Yeah, sure, man. Pop a link. I don't know if I have to approve it or not. I don't know how links work on YouTube. Maybe just type on how to find it or, or something. You know, the thing I like about Smiling Friends the most is, uh... Like the weird petty arguments that they get with one another, or like the weird random characters that they encounter, that uh, they almost feel very real, like very real people. Even though it's a cartoon, it just feels like I've kind of had a conversation like this before, or I've seen this happen before. I'm thinking specifically of the episode where they go to Brazil and they just immediately start bickering over some bullshit. And then there's like this Brazilian guy that comes up to them and just starts asking them for money. <laughs> and he's like, do you have any money? Do you have money? And then and he's like, Brazil is a beautiful country. You you will enjoy it here. Very enjoy it. The best country in the world. And then they, but the thing is that the thing I like about Smiling Friends is uh, they put these like little micro expressions on their the characters, like like their eyebrow will furrow just for like a half a second, whatever. So you can like. You can see the characters clearly getting frustrated, right? For, but it's only just for like, like, a, like, a, like a, a glimmer of it, right? And for a cartoon, I find that funny because like, um, I don't think like a lot of cartoonists do that before, you know? Just like really quick mi micro expressions where just they look like you can tell they're pissed off or they're holding back or something like that, or their face is, lo is uh, betraying their what they're saying, you know? Did the link show up? No, sorry man, I don't think the link showed up because... Hold on, maybe if I open up YouTube Studio here. I, I think YouTube's got some sort of like, link filter on or something, I don't know how it works. Most people don't really have, like, cable TV these days, you know. I can't even watch Adult Swim in Canada, uh, unless I go to their website. Um, but they're, they're cool, though. I like them. I like them. Man, I'm not drawn very well today. Maybe I should just, like, I don't know what I'm doing. Is this... I find drawing on the iPad to be more fun. I haven't played Disco Asylum, but I, I've seen it. It looks cool. I don't really play a lot of video games these days, so... Do you know how to pitch to Adult Swim? Um, I don't know, man. Like, I can't, like... You, you basically have to f make connections with them some way. Um, usually, it's so it's like... 
if you haven't made anything yet, though, they're unlikely to hire you. So, if you if you're thinking of pitching something to Adult Swim, I, I would suggest just like making an animation first, like uh, something like a proof of concept, you know, like a one minute video, and uh, putting it on YouTube, whatever, because um, they're they're looking. They always they're they're aware even of like really small channels. They're looking for stuff all the time. And um, but if you don't have anything though, it's like uh, just pitching stuff is is pretty difficult because they're they're usually looking for someone who who uh, especially for smalls is like a like an all in one sort of thing where it's, they do all the animation and all the voices and all the, everything basically. They don't they don't like hire out like all the different parts. It's like they subcontract you as like a like a studio almost. I mean that's usually how it goes even for television shows, but um They used to have a show where you could like call in and pitch called development meeting. But that was honestly kind of a waste of time. They never really made anything. It was just um, something that I, I don't know what exactly. With the Dominique, appreciate the comment there. Val Valnia? I don't really know too much about Sisyphus to be able to competently draw any parallels, to be quite honest. I mean, I know he's like the guy that, uh, I forget, some Greek god or whatever told him. He got pissed off, basically, made him push a rock up a hill forever. Uh, that's about all I know. The main thing I wanted to say with Interface was basically that... We're becoming, uh, you know, a hyper-technological, hyper-technology-based society that every moment of our lives is... Memories and stuff are, are done through screens, you know, talking to people online, Discord and all that video games, simulated sort of thing, it's eating into the natural life and what it is to be human. And uh, I think um, we're, like, uh, there's not enough people um, like aware of this 
and they're gonna go through life eventually become 60 years old and be like well I spent 50% of my time looking at a screen or uh, or or interacting with humans I've never actually seen in real life you know and it's just gonna keep getting worse and uh, that's like one of the things I kind of want to discuss with interface there was my other themes there was like it's kind of like a com combination of a different a lot of different stuff um, you know what like what it's like to be what consciousness is you know and can you store them into a computer and is uh like the cerebral electricity is basically like training data for like algorithms essentially you know if that's how you were to interpret it um, and so if you absorb that information people can learn different things like mischief can become a frog just like the training data can make a frog if you ask it to it because it trained on images of frogs you know and I approach it in a way where it's not really like I have a here's my thoughts and here's it's more like it's more like here's what's going on and here's some sort of interpretative allegory in a musical sort of way that doesn't really tells you what to think just to be aware about it you know just be aware of it maybe come to your own conclusions that's all I don't know that's what kind of what I was trying to think about like when I was making an interface also a lot of what I was doing wasn't really um, planned out I was just kind of working from my subconscious and uh, like when he's a bird like I was just like I'll make him a bird and I didn't think about it I just make a bird and he comes into the hospital he's being a bird and uh, that's a lot of it kind of just happened to be uh, a lot of things coming together and just working out I guess CE, I mean, it, it is an allegory to soul, but it's also like, it's just data. It's like brain energy, like the data that's stored in the brain. My, the idea I had behind it was like, how does Mischief know how to become a bus? Oh, it's because some time ago he absorbed someone who was like a, a car engineer or something, you know? So he knows how to make a bus. Your uh, secondary, your second year architecture studio project. That's interesting. How did it affect you, uh, affect your the architecture? Like, how did you look design wise? How did it change how the way things look? Or Eugene Adult Swim has already hired me a couple times to make idents. I just don't know how to talk about pitching smalls. Well, whoever your contact is with making the ident, just ask them, hey, can I pitch the smalls? It's not like a... They're not like a huge... Uh, it's not as big as like it seems. It's, it's just a small group of people, basically. So The development meeting is no longer a thing, though, so I don't know. It's... Uh, they're not doing that anymore.
Will safe modes of uh, OST be released on CD? Uh, probably. Yeah, I'm gonna. I don't know when I'm gonna put it out, but um, probably when I f finish it or decide the project's over, which I don't know when that will be, but. I'm probably not going to break it up into parts like part 1 and part 2 like I did with Interface. Interface, a safe mode was supposed to be like a smaller project. It wasn't supposed to be like as long as Interface or... So I don't know. Amy, for real? I mean, n not really, man. I, it's I don't really um. I don't really pay attention too much to uh, what's going on out there in the animation world, which is kind of weird. But that's just how it is, I guess. That's cool, uh, man, uh, architecture project. Buzzard Studio, thank you. Um, why a pink clown of all things? Um, well, originally Mischief wasn't just pink, he was like, came in multiple colors. Uh, like my idea of him. But, pink? I don't know, like, uh, I, I, I was just kind of drawn to him being pink, I didn't think about it, I didn't really think about it, yeah. I got a drawing of him at least, but this not quite. He doesn't. He's like lacking a certain dankness, so I gotta figure out what's going on there. How to make your drawings dank is a skill. Because it's not really something you could just teach. I like to like. It's like an instinctual thing.
does save mode take place in the future of so save mode takes place in the brain of the mechanical sarcophagus or whatever the big baby blimp thing it's basically inside the simulated world Uh, Val Nia, am I taking interviews? Um, I, not really, just because I don't, I mean, maybe, but it, I'm not really, I mean, I don't have that much. I, I get a lot of requests for that kind of stuff, and I don't try not to do it too often, because uh, it, it's, it, I find it kind of draining a little bit. I've been trying to do less interviews than before. Were you able to find the video, by the way? Uh, I'm sorry, man. I didn't see any link or anything, and I can't check it out right now unless I see a link, so... Have you ever met a real-life clown? Um, back when I was a kid, yeah. I mean... I don't know, like... There was, like, a an A&W... I think it was. Or was it McDonald's? I forget. But there used to be like visiting clowns. More than often. Look, like, sometimes you go to a Chinese restaurant and there'd be like a clown there. And he, <laughs> he'd like come around to your table and be like, you do a magic trick. The 90s were like a different time, man. I don't know what was going on back then. But I remember that as a kid. That was like a thing. Nowadays, they you have know, like there's like a DJ, like some guy, some poor guy's doing DJing at a McDonald's, or like the clothing store or whatever. Back then, they just had like a Chinese clown on standby, and he would come out and bedazzle you, and no one asked for it. <laughs> it was just like okay. Uh, last year on one of your streams, I was asking you about music and animation. I have a series of shorts. I just maybe consider taking a look. Yeah, man, just send me a... The best way to share stuff with me is just send me a Twitter message. Like, at me on Twitter. And I can... I can find it that way. Basbutra. Um... I will consider that. Yeah, it's here's the thing, man. I actually, it's hard for me to come up with funny meme ideas. Like the the Seinfeld expands video is like so, such a simple concept, but like I don't find it particularly easy to come up with a good joke. That's something I haven't already done, you know. I mean, I could make uh, I don't know. I could make another video called like fucking. Well, who's that guy? Steve Harvey? Steve Harvey expands. But it's like I already did that joke, so I don't like, you know, I. 
He'd be like on that show. What's that show called? Family Feud? I'll make an animation called Steve Harvey gets stuck in a doorway on his way out of the green room to Family Feud. And his like foot's like caught, like it's just caught in like the hinge or something. And it's like 13 minutes long. I don't know if that's a funny idea. Like, I don't know how to come up with shit anymore. Like, I, I don't know. See, here's the thing. If you overthink your ideas, it becomes less funny sometimes. One day, I was sitting on my bed, and I was like, Okay, but what if Seinfeld just, like, it gets really large? There you go. Steve RV contracts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is this is a different mouth shape. This is more like a classic, classic mischief mouth. I like it. Do you have the perfect recipe for poutine? A family member brought back packets of sauces, and we don't have cheese curdles over there, I think. So, uh... The cheese is actually the most important thing. It has to be the right kind of cheese. They should have brought you... Uh, you can go to the grocery store here and buy some of the poutine cheese. But it's basically cheese curdle. So, if you don't have any, maybe you can make some. I think you can make it with milk, maybe. But... Um, the sauce should be fine if you just make the sauce separately. But it's the cheese is the most important thing because the cheese has to be like dry and squeaky and light. And it can't be like mozzarella. It can't be like s s stringy and uh, it can't be uh, s like stretchy, you know? So, um, yeah, just... And your french fries... I, I tend to like poutine that has like thicker cut french fries instead of like those very thin McCain french fries. You can do that, but um, you know, uh, the thicker the french fry, the better. Do you have a. Um, yeah, so unfortunately. I got cheese poutine in my fridge. I got poutine cheese in my fridge right now. Sometimes just snack on it. I don't even have to put it on a poutine. So I feel like his body is like too elongated. There we go. Yeah. He needs to be cuter. <laughs> I, I need to like come up with... So, um, you know, I could make a shirt that just says tweet 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 on it or I'm a bird or whatever. But I think it might be funny to just have like something... Like, I don't know. It's just... I don't know. Like... Yeah, I can use catchphrases. Obviously, that wouldn't work. But... It's... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. I hope he says Inland Empire. <laughs> See, that's that shit just makes me laugh. Like, it's so doesn't make any sense with like why I would have that. But uh, like, it's I don't know. Like, I feel like it would make fans like find it funny just to have something that's like completely not what he would say. You know what I mean?
He's like, he's like, uh, he'll say something like, um, Poutine cheese. Yeah, I like that. He just goes, poutine cheese. He shows up and he's like, poutine cheese. It has nothing to do with interface. I didn't even spell it properly. Poutine. Poutine. Cheese. Poutine cheese. I'm a t-shirt, yes. Poutine cheese. <laughs> Poutani. Poutine. Ugh. Um, it was, uh, when I came up the line, it was just basically, because Mischief says, like, really, uh, obvious things. Like, this is one of his character traits that, so basically he's like, um, uh, I took the stairs or whatever, and it's like, he just says stuff that's very obvious, like, I'm a bus, or, you know, <clears throat> he says something like, um, I don't know, he just, like, states the obvious, basically. So, so when he's saying, tweet, 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 I'm being a bird, that was basically just him being very obvious about like we can see you're a bird you know like it's you don't have to tell everybody you know? but... <laughs> I'm a delicious platter of house poutine oh man I appreciate the super chat Max Arceus. I don't know why it's not showing stuff, but uh, let's see here. Mini Octopus Contest, the results channel by Duralink. Okay. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Which place did you get in? Uh, oh, the bit at eleven fifteen. Hold on, let me uh, let me turn on the mic. I think you should be able to hear it now. Cheers. No, I think this entry is also really cool. Uh, I believe it's based after um, uh, the series called Interface, uh, which you can find on YouTube. And this is the episode Umami. named Umami. Process. Now, I watched a few of these uh, episodes today. And it's just uh, really trippy, uh, really weird. <coughs> oh man, this is crazy, dude. But, uh, yeah, for some reason I just uh, wanted to keep seeing it. No, I think this scene is also really nicely done. Um, yeah, you should really go uh, look for Interface uh, on YouTube and then look for an episode. Man, you did like a really good month. job. That looks exactly yeah, like really a restaurant. Weird, but uh, really uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's... Uh... So we got like, there. Oh my god, dude! You got the car out here in the front. Uh, you got that weird yellow guy. Oh, he's red here, but and then you got the octopus and all that stuff in the kitchen. Mischief. I like how you made mischief out of like, <laughs> just like random, 
random uh, zoo, uh, random parts, basically. I wanted to keep seeing them. No, I think this scene is also really nicely done. Yeah, um, man, that's cool. Yeah, you should really go uh, look for interface uh, on YouTube and then look for it. And uh, here in the sky, you can uh, see some more of this. Oh, my internet. Is... Zoom in on it. What is this? No, <laughs> I think uh, this is a. Oh, it looks like um, interface. Uh, it looks like a uh, mischief when he's like in the sky, basically. I don't know why my internet is dying. Ah. Recognizable. If you've seen the, the series, uh, you uh, nice, neatly uh, uh, done by Max Arceus. And I think he made a really funky uh, palette that we will definitely probably only see for entries like this. Or maybe a 73 will see another use for it. That's cool, man. All right, now there's just two entries remaining. Uh, I will first show That's cool, man. Thank outfit. you for that. Ask Joe. Hey, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Uh, do you have a Ukrainian background? Um, I'm not like my grandfather. He's, uh, he was, like, Ukrainian. More Ukrainian. I don't know, like, exactly how far back it goes. I, but I'm pretty sure he was born... Yeah, he was born in Ukraine, I think. I don't know. Or was it his father? But, yeah, Tomchuk is a, is a Ukrainian last name. Back then, though, it was Poland, I think. The area that he was from, or, or that family was from, was... Like south, southeastern Poland, which is now Ukraine, yeah. But I don't speak Ukrainian or uh, or anything like that. Uh, just uh, I have a I have some some traits such as loving poutine, not poutine, sorry, uh, pierogies, and. Um, Yeah, but I don't know too much about it, the history, really, you know, on my grandfather's side of the family. The, a lot of uh, Ukrainians immigrated to Canada in the uh, early 20th century, and they ended up in, like, uh, basically farmland in the middle of either Edmonton or, like, the prairies. And uh, I think he, my grandfather... Joined the Air Force, and um, they, uh, they, the base, they, they moved him around to a bunch of bases, and eventually he ended up in Greenwood. I think it's called Greenwood or, or Greenwich. I forget. Uh, Greenwood, Nova Scotia. So that's how my family ended up there. Otherwise, I don't think there was that many Ukrainians in Nova Scotia back then. There is probably now, because uh, a lot of Ukrainian refugees have entered Canada since then. Obviously, because of the war. And uh, they don't just like... They don't just like ship them off to the middle of nowhere like they used to. So they're probably in the cities... It was supposed to be Cammy in Chef's Vision. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I got you there, man. Lettuce head. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Throgies come with the DNA, and so does... Uh... Uh, 
the inability to smile at people in public. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I can't. I can't do that. It sucks, man. Oh, turn the music back on. Do you think we unconsciously inherit our ancestors' memories? In some way, it manifests in the art we make, or even certain phobias. Ah. Uh, that's a hard one, man. I have no idea how this shit works. <laughs> I mean, like, when you... Where does life come from? It splits off from... From your, you know, your mother and your father. and But your memories are blank, supposedly. But there are stories of people saying that when people are very young, like, just after being born or, like, one or two years old, sometimes these kids have, like, memories that are unnatural like they can speak like they they have memories of like locations that they've never been basically here's the problem i have with that is uh it's not documented there's no scientific like backing or studies on this sort of thing and any try anytime you try to like research this you just get a bunch of like quacky to youtube videos about like conspiracy like just made up shit basically you know the whole, the whole, the whole like uh, af life after death or life before death thing is something that is like not really studied in science, and uh, but the people that do study it, they they tend to not do things scientifically, and so you get these like a lot of just hearsay and like random stories or some unverified claims about this or that. So it's hard for me to, like, take it seriously, you know what I mean? It's the same thing with, like, ghosts. Like, I don't know, maybe there's ghosts out there, maybe? Or, like, the universe hallucinates and, like, repeats sounds that existed in certain locations, maybe, it's possible. But this, there's never any, uh, like scientifically like no good s study it's always done by like fucking uh, grifters and shit that you find you know what i mean so it's it's like the signal to ra the noise ratio in those categories is so uh poor that it's hard to invest time in thinking about it you know I don't think we inherit memories. That's because I don't know, like maybe we do. Or maybe there's like a different type of memory bank that's different from the one in your brain, but hold on. I gotta go blow my nose again. Uh.
When I was a kid, I used to say weird stuff. Like, I remember holding you as a baby grandma, but when I was just lying, because who knows why. Yeah, I, I remember one time when I was a kid, I remember I got in trouble for this. I was like, I went to uh, my preschool. It was preschool, like, before grade one, or grade primary. And I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, my house burnt down. And then I was like, yeah, everyone's fine, though. And then my, my preschool teacher was like, what? What do you mean your house burnt down? And then my par they called my parents, and then everyone was like, they like made me sit down and discuss it. And I was like, I don't know, I just decided to say that the house burnt down. <laughs> like, I don't know, kids just make shit up. Like, I don't... I don't know, man. It's it's hard for me to think about stuff we're not really prepared to have the answers for. Yes, lighter questions would be good, probably. <laughs> All right, so he comes out. He comes out in bird form, and he says, "Poutine cheese." I need to redraw his eyes. First mischief eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that makes me laugh because you don't expect him to see like this with this poutine cheese coming out it's getting real aggressive poutine cheese and then maybe he's got a french fry with him Andrew Tafik. Hey, where were you in life when the idea of mischief and interface seemed to manifest itself from your head? 
where were I in life? Where was I in life? Um, um, I was in a uh, small apartment um, with Carolina, and I we were we we were filming documentaries on how products are made in Canada. My friend came over and showed me a bunch of YouTube channels and wanted me to start animating, basically. And um, so I just, um, I remember distinctly making the McFellan, the McDriven video, the Ronald McDonald one, and um, as like a shit post, basically. And because uh, I made music, right? So I, and I put it on YouTube. And um, I think I posted it to Reddit or something like that. And then uh, I went to the gym to exercise. And I came back and it was like, it had like 500 points on Reddit. And I was like, man, these people like this stuff. This weird ass, poorly drawn animation. Uh, where was I in life? Um, basically, I had enough money to pay my rent and expenses. Um, but... It was not like I had any money, really. That was most of my 20s, honestly. Um, and then once I got into animating Mischief and the series and making merch and stuff, things became a little bit easier for me. I'm still not like super popular on YouTube, though. It's like it's still uh, tough for me, but it's not. Um, it's become a lot easier, that's for sure. Because surprisingly, you know, for a channel of my size, I, I think I sell like a lot of merch, and I think that's kind of an, an, an outlier. And I think it's because I put a lot of effort into making it look interesting, or I try to make it interesting. I really like this poutine cheese guy, though. I really like this. I might like. I might make a screen printed shirt with this design just because um, I just it's just simple and I like it's just he's cute looking But he doesn't have any poutine cheese with him, though, so I don't know. Maybe I should draw some poutine cheese. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Greatest artistic inspirations. I don't, uh, I don't know. I, I really like Francis Bacon paintings. Um, I like, I like what I like most about of his paintings is the big, broad spaces of color that he uses, kind of contrasting with the the more psycho, like the more uh, creepy looking portraits. But the the big, broad colors and the color choices that he uses are. Like, excellent. That's why I like his stuff the most. You know, um, the channel is... My YouTube channel is doing, in terms of watch time, it's doing the best it has ever done, ever, right now. Which is, um, it's kind of surprising me. I think it's because of this album I came out with. And uh, it's just been, the algorithm loves it. It's been sending it to everybody. And uh, that's probably the title I chose. Stop Doom Scrolling or whatever. That was like an excellent title, to ch title choice because... Uh, I think that's why people are clicking on it. But it's still getting like a ton of views every day, like um, 10,000 views a day. like, And so that's been boosting my numbers on YouTube a little bit.
Let him carry some poutine cheese as an eagle carries a sheep to his nest. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Mischief just wants poutine cheese. He's not like the other birds. I'm not like the other birds. I just want poutine cheese. Please. Maybe I'll say that. Or is that too much text? <laughs> I got a doom scrolling problem, man. I think everyone does these days, but I can't blame. Is this fucking the apps are like? I the the best uh, contra contraceptive contra contraceptive to doom scrolling is just leaving your phone in a different room. Otherwise, you're just like ah, what do I do? Ah, my brain, and you just like start looking at it. it's like what the fuck. And the thing is, is it's it drains you. Poutine cheese is not like the other curds. I like that. Oh, that's a good one. Just like I'm not like the other birds. <laughs> is that too much text? I kind of like how it rhymes. Where, where do I send the royalties on this shirt design for that catchphrase? <laughs> mm. Jeez. Maybe I'll just type it out. Uh, I think it's... Or maybe what I'll do is I'll type it out, then trace it, so it looks hand-drawn. Should I spell birds with a U? This phone's there, Distractor 9000. Yeah, for sure. It's a productivity killer, too. Just add the please, I'm not like the other birds, is kind of pick me. It's it's like that, I'm not like the other girls, you know what I mean? <laughs> Whoa, that's a big curd. Okay. Birds and birds. I really like this. Poutine cheese ain't like the other curds, just like I ain't like the other birds. That's see. Here's the thing I like about this design, is it's um. I can put this on a nice screen printed shirt and sell this to someone who doesn't even know what interface is, and they will, they'll probably like it too, especially if they live in Montreal. Because I want to. Like, I like having merch that's related to Interface, but I also want it to be... I want it to, like, be more than Interface, you know what I mean? And then people see it, and then they're like, where the f- oh, I've seen this bird before somewhere, right? 
And then they're like, what the fuck does a web series? There's a whole bird lore. It's a whole lore to him being a bird. But let me change the font, maybe. Uh, technically, it's a typeface. Not a font, I think. So, you know, um, if you subscribe to Adobe, you uh, get access to all these different fonts. And so, um, I don't know why that didn't work. Oh, it did work. Okay. So, uh, so you basically, you can, it's, that's one of the cool things about paying for the Adobe subscription. A lot of stuff like this. You can go choose a font that you want. Curds, birds, and then you can, I don't know. We'll see what's in here. Maybe there's something funky. Mischief also compares hand sizes with boys he likes. Look how small my hands are. <laughs> uh, looks like too much text. Maybe without the does. Hey, I like that Sky 9. Let's see what it looks like without the does. Oh, that's perfect. I, I thank you for the uh, suggestion. It is too much text. Ain't Poutine cheese ain't like other curds, just like I ain't like other birds yeah oh that's much better thank you for the suggestion uh, let's see um, find a font that looks good I like using serif fonts it gives a shirt like a classic look and um, I think they're coming back in style serif fonts or typefaces or whatever. <laughs> Hi, I'm from Canada and I'm here to answer questions about poutine cheese. Infildo Matt, uh, do you know how to make poutine at home? I mean, uh, poutine cheese at home. Is that possible? Probably go with like something thick. I kind of like this one actually already, so I'll add it to the family and see what else is there. That's decoy. That's not bad. I like it because it looks a little bit hand drawn too. I'll fix the kerning and spacing later, once I've decided on the typeface. There's hand here too, I can get like a hand drawing look. A little too cartoony looking sometimes though. Thick, contrasty. What do they got here? No. I don't like this kind of style because it looks a little. It's a little too shirt designy looking. I see like this on this, a lot of shirts. This kind of thick. This one, Manslava. Mansalva? It looks kind of like how I draw, so maybe that might work. It's hard to read, though. This one's better. Yeah, excuse me. And 
I don't like this stuff. A little, a little too uh, cartoony looking. I think. Hey, hey, crab lord. Isn't there gravy involved? Yeah, there is gravy involved. Yeah. <laughs> I love Valkyrie logo. What? What is that? Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, maybe I can get them to partner up with me. What the hell is this man? That's like an intense version of him. It's like a French cheese company, I think. Uh, yeah, we get this in Quebec. Ba beef based gravy. For the love of God, don't use Comic Sans. Is this going to be a t shirt design? I, yeah, I think I am going to make it on a shirt. It looks like. I like how it looks. It looks really good. Um, Owen Schultz. I, I'm working on safe mode. It's, I'm not. I've been putting I put it on pause for a little bit just because I haven't really been enjoying making it. Uh, I just wanted to do random shit for a while, and uh, I need like a break from safe mode. So I've just been doing random stuff for a bit. It is it's like I have it like animated like eighty percent of it, but I want to like extend it a bit. I guess so. You know, I think I kind of like this font. I just chose the first one. But the only thing I don't like about it is how. Th Maybe if I change the the thickness of it, um, there's like different versions of the same font. Let's decoy. Ultra black poutine cheese. That's a little too thick. Medium bold. And maybe I'll uh, do something like that. So, um, this is the wrong apostrophe right here, so I have to fix that. Also, it's randomly cap locks and not cap locks. So let's see here. Maybe if I... Oh, sorry. Uh, started adding the word the again. Too much text. Poutine cheese ain't like other curds, just like I ain't like other birds. So the spacing between here and there needs to be a little bit different. And I don't know, maybe he should say birds correctly. Or is it funnier to have it you with a you? But he's not really a bird. That's what that the joke. The joke is that he's trying to be a bird, so maybe he is like a bird. Just like he's a frog spelt wrong. <laughs> maybe he's in his random shit era. <laughs> Yeah, yes, uh, that'd be uh, that's true. 
Let the man sell cement in peace. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Have you ever considered one day reanimating the first episodes of Interface to bring out the more in line with the quality of later episodes? Um, uh, no. I, you know, I did think about it, but I don't want to be like George Lucas, because then I'll never know when to stop, you know? There, well, there was a few, like, believe it or not, there is a few changes I've made in the first episode and second episode that, uh, basically, I just... Uh, that, that for the Blu-ray version, I, I fixed it up a bit. I just cleaned up some of the pixels that were blurry that I didn't notice and stuff like that. But I kept the style. Um, I think also the fact that it looks so rough in the first episode is kind of like... I don't know. It like, e like it eases people into it somehow. They like, they're like, okay, this is just a weird shitpost thing, right? And then it starts getting better and they're like, what the hell? It's kind of like a surprise, maybe. I don't know. I could redo it, but I feel like it would kind of ruin ruin it. That's the magic, you know. And yeah, like people say, they do like to see how the evolution of the animation gets better over time. If it was like blurry and shit, and like not the right resolution and exported wrong, I would probably redo it. But I, I was pretty consistent with how I kept the style. Yeah, birds with a U. Birds is part of the joke. I think so, yeah. I like the birds. Okay, so... I think, in terms of kerning, everything looks okay. But, if you don't know what kerning is, it's a spacing between the letters. But, I think that maybe I should spread it out just a little bit for these words. And you can do that with this. I don't want the, the letters to touch each other. Let's set up the 50. Now, you said there are certain things. You set up the 50, but then it's not perfect. Like right here, there's too much space in between the apostrophe, so you can set the custom in between letter ones like this. To go. If it's 50, you have to set it to minus 100, I think. That's how it works. My dad showed me how to do this a long time ago. He's a graphic designer, or was a graphic designer. Ah. <laughs> uh. Okay. Yeah, so design wise, if you're doing anything with text, it's very important that you pay attention to stuff like this because um, also, like, making sure you have the right apostrophe, like, the default is, is like a, is not, like, I don't know if you guys ever watch television shows and then, oh, I hope it's not. But basically, um, Sometimes on, like, actual Hollywood movies, they don't use apostrophes. They use the friggin' inch symbol. Which is, uh, I can't do it in Photoshop because it automatically switches it to the... But let's say, hold on, just give me a second here. Like, the default is to have an inch. Which is that. That's not an apostrophe. But anyone who, like, does graphic design or illustration where like you basically that's the, you don't use that unless you're talking about feet you know so um, that's something to be aware of and sometimes I see it in like professional Hollywood movies and I'm like my god man some title designer what do they hire they hired like, like an amateur basically and I get triggered from it because my dad would always point it out 
when he would see it in movies. And I think this should also be lowercase. Poutine cheese ain't like other curds. Maybe we should all be like poutine. Just like... I think... Does that look... I think that looks better. When I don't capitalize... The... the it makes it a little feel more... Um, it makes it makes it just seem a little bit less proper, I guess. Or it's just more... Uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Didn't she use well... Oh, okay. you guys can hear her singing? Yeah, uh, Carolina has been practicing singing for a long time. She's been taking classes. Okay, poutine cheese ain't like other curds. Let's see if there's anything else that looks off to me. Yeah, so this is minus 100 here. Oops. Minus... Yeah. And that's minus 75, probably... Too much. Um, right here, it, you just—I kind of just eyeball it, really. Like, it just looks to me like the U and the R are a little bit too close together, and maybe the R and the D are a little bit too close together. It's all kind of like subjective, really. Yeah, it's just a little, a little bit more balanced to me, you know? And uh, you and the are here, maybe I'll do that too. And this, B and the U, it almost looks like it's too far apart. Maybe having the baseline be 50 is too much, so I'll set it like the 40. I think... It's, it's like also possible to overdo it. What's a good way to get better known slash collaborating with other artists or keep doing your own thing solo and hoping someone notices? The collab option helps with visibility, but your art loses its voice. Um, you know, honestly, I don't think collabs actually work that well, really, unless you're doing it with someone who's like super famous. Um, personally, I just, I find collaborating with artists to be kind of a compromise a bit sometimes because maybe it doesn't work out like I, I throw away shit all the time like I'll draw stuff and it, I'll just chuck it out I'm like I don't like how it's working so sometimes when I'm collaborating there's like less you're like you're not willing to like throw stuff away so much because you want to work with this person and, and work on an idea but if you just like force an idea to collaborate on sometimes it doesn't it's not your best work I don't know I, I personally just think if you're looking to collaborate with other artists, just keep doing your the good thing. You're gonna get people asking you all the time. You know, I, I get asked a lot, and I, I I tell them I just don't really collaborate. I don't really commission stuff, you know. But um, I don't know. It depends on what kind of art you're doing too. Like if it's music, it's different than if you're drawing stuff or. Oh, oh no. I think I might redraw a section of his french fry here.
trying to clean up some of the line of our art here a bit. I do like how it looks hand-drawn, so I'm not going to clean up too much. I'll probably draw some poutine curds over here now. Maybe I'll get rid of them later, but... Alt, shift, arrow keys. Oh, okay. I guess I could do that for the current. Oh, uh, it's too late now, but I'll do it next time, maybe. <laughs> I don't like that curd. Hello from Columbia. Hey, Lean. Thank you. I, apparently, I have a ton of fans in Colombia. Or in South America, too, actually. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, let's just put some color in the sky now. I should probably save this, too, before my computer crashes and I lose everything. Um... I gotta fix his lips a little bit. I think they're a little messed up. Do you think a nest of poutine would be too busy? Um, I think it might be. I mean, I could try... I'm just trying to imagine what it would look like. Uh, I don't know. I think it might, on a shirt, it might look a little too busy, I think. It's not a bad idea, though. 
like a french fry nest. I don't know though. Uh, logo, do I, I, I do a lot of the animations by myself, but now I have someone helping me. Part-time worker, uh, Allie, and uh, Carolina helps too, so it's three of us, I guess. Alright. I don't know how to color this. Maybe I do it more stylized and just more loose. I could do something very loose. I don't like that. I think it just looks messy that way. I might as well clean it. Just fill it in like this. Slugger boy, thank you. I am having a pretty good day, besides having being sick. Do you have the exact color of mischief saved somewhere? Yes, I have my uh, palette up here. You cannot see; it's covered by a donut guy. It's over here. Right here. So every time, it's always the same colors, basically. Light blue shirt. I could make it uh, any color, really. I usually go with neutral colors, though. I could probably put this one on this design on a couple different colors. Also, I liked.
I don't know if the highlights on his teeth look good, so... Yeah, I guess he's sort of like a sesame roll sort of thing. Uh, I will not share my hex codes. You guys have to find your own color palettes that work. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what do I use for music? Um, I use Logic. Logic Studio. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I don't think I'll just keep it simple and not do that. Okay. Um, I like this design, but I think... What, uh, bro, what, what is the style in which you draw your videos? I, I don't know what the style would be. I would just call it... Uh, Low resolution, low fi, or low ro just draw in low resolution basically. Yeah, um, everyone, thank you for hanging out with me today. I think I'm gonna call quits for now because uh, I'm just getting tired now. Uh, I got my cool design here, I like this. I'll probably work on it for another day, just clean it up a bit, and uh. I might put this on a shirt, like a screen printed one, like nice quality. So, uh, I think it's a pretty good, uh, just a simple design, you know, funny design. And uh, thank you for guys for the suggestions and everything. I really do appreciate all that. So that's it for tonight. Have a good night, everyone. Bye bye. I'll catch you all next time.